Robert Mundell, Nobel Prize winning economist for his monetary theory, he said to me, this is what I've been waiting for, for almost 50 years, since we closed the gold window, 1971, here in the United States. Uh, this is a global rules-based monetary system, and it's digital and decentralized. It's private, so no government oversight, no throat to choke either. And uh, I said, okay, Art, this is a very big idea then. He said, how big is it? And he said, well, how big is the U.S. monetary base? And at the time it was four and a half trillion dollars. Uh, today it is seven and a half trillion dollars. Uh, so right then and there, I knew we had something big and we gained our first exposure to Bitcoin in 2015 when it was somewhere between 200 and 250 dollars uh today it's 73 thousand dollars and we think the journey has just begun the recent tremors felt across the cryptocurrency landscape particularly with bitcoin's sudden price correction have once again ignited a fervent debate on the future trajectory of this digital currency behemoth Despite the short-lived downturn, the optimism among analysts and investors remain undimmed, fueled by a confluence of factors that hint at an imminent bull cycle. Bitcoin currently trading around $70,000 mark, down from its all-time high of $73,750, has stirred not just speculative interest but a tangible shift in how the financial markets perceive digital currencies. The recovery from the dip and the projected leap towards the $100k target by year's end underscore a broader narrative of the resilience and long-term value. This projection is not just wishful thinking, but is backed by significant developments within the crypto sphere. Firstly, the role of Bitcoin ETFs cannot be overstated, with entities like ARK Invest, BlackRock, and Fidelity receiving the SEC's nod for spot Bitcoin's ETFs. The floodgates have opened for institutional money into the cryptocurrency market. This endorsement has not only legitimized Bitcoin as an investment asset, but also triggered record inflows into the US ETFs, amplifying the demand for Bitcoin. The integration of Bitcoin into institutional portfolios, as envisaged by ARK Invest Kathy Wood, could add a staggering $2.3 million to Bitcoin's value underscoring the profound impact institutional investors could have. Furthermore, the scheduled Bitcoin halving event in April is poised to be a pivotal moment. Historical precedents from 2012, 2016, and 2020 halvings have shown significant price rallies post-event, driven by a supply shock. With the halving reducing the reward for mining new blocks by half, thereby diminishing the new supply of Bitcoin. The anticipation of supply crunch is palpable among market observers. This event, coupled with aggressive miner capacity expansion and record miner revenues, paints a bullish picture for Bitcoin's future price trajectory. Kathy Wood's ambitious projection of Bitcoin reaching $3.8 million, riding on what she describes as a financial superhighway, might seem fantastical to some. Yet, Considering the digital currency's performance and the evolving financial ecosystem, such projections increasingly fall within the realm of possibility. Wood's vision of internet-based financial ecosystem that reduces intermediary costs speaks to the broader transformation underway, driven by blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. The implications of Bitcoin's ascendancy are profound, especially for emerging economies plagued by economic volatility and inflation. In countries like Nigeria, Bitcoin is not merely a speculative asset, but a hedge against economic instability and a beacon of financial autonomy for its citizens. This dual role of Bitcoin as both an investment and a stabilizing force underscores its growing importance in the global financial landscape. Now listen to what she has to say. Any advisor, asset allocator knows that uh, if you have the opportunity to find a new asset class with low correlation to other asset classes in terms of returns, what will typically happen is if you put a slice of it in the portfolio, um, you will increase returns per unit of risk. 
So um, I think it's very uh, important that um, advisors, asset allocators have a point of view on this. I mean, you may say you don't believe in this for whatever the reasons are that we won't be able to understand, but you have to take a point of view now because it, it and we've done the paper on a new asset class and how many ways you can recognize it as a new asset class. Uh, so, so that's what I would say. Um, I do want to make one comment. I've been chomping at the bit because I just uh, we just learned this really today. There is something going on in the world that I think is going to highlight uh, the importance of Bitcoin in another way. We're talking about the developed world here, but in the emerging market, something is going on today. Uh, it has been going on for the last few weeks in Nigeria. Uh, actually, since last June, uh, when they floated their currency, uh, the, the Naira has uh, depreciated by two thirds. Now, can you imagine uh, living in Nigeria, having all of your assets in and your wages in Naira? You've just lost two thirds of your purchasing power and two thirds of your wealth if you have everything, right? Kathy Wood's visionary stance at Bitcoin Investor Day conference, where she forecasted Bitcoin's potential ascent to $3.8 million, underscores a seismic shift in the cryptocurrency landscape. Now this projection, significantly surpassing her earlier $1.5 million prediction by 2030, is rooted in a burgeoning institutional adoption catalyzed by the SEC's reluctant approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs. The nod for these ETFs, spearheaded by the financial behemoths like BlackRock and Fidelity, has not only legitimized Bitcoin in the eyes of institutional investors, but also led to record-breaking inflows into the US ETFs, signaling a heightened demand for Bitcoin. Wood's analysis suggests that if institutional investors allocate just over 5% of their portfolios to Bitcoin, an addition of $2.3 million to its value could be realized. This insight emphasizes the significant impact that institutional capital inflow could have on Bitcoin's valuation, potentially elevating it to unprecedented levels. The anticipated Bitcoin halving event in April further compounds this bullish outlook. Historical precedents following the past halvings have shown dramatic price surges, attributed to the reduced rate of new Bitcoin generation, suggesting another potential boost to Bitcoin's value. Wood envisions this trajectory as a part of a broader revolution towards an internet-native financial ecosystem, poised to dismantle the traditional financial intermediaries. Now this paradigm shift, according to Wood, positions Bitcoin at the forefront of transformative financial landscape, promising not only substantial return for investors, but also heralding a more efficient, decentralized global financial system. We're very interested in the emerging markets and how, how Bitcoin is going to save purchasing power, save wealth. Um, there, are, there is actually, we're invested in a company in our venture fund, uh, Chipper Cash, that has given Nigerians access to uh, crypto assets. Uh, which this is the only thing, and, and of course they have appreciated dramatically as the, the Naira has been collapsing, uh, much like Bitcoin did even here in this country last year uh, during the regional bank crisis, uh, when regional banks were imploding, Bitcoin went up from 20 to more than $40,000, it, it, it doubled. So um, I think we're getting glimpses of how important this new asset class is going to be to everyone, no matter uh, because Bitcoin has no counterparty risk like our banks. You know, it's fully decentralized, completely transparent. So, I think uh, just speaking about it in this way, we can talk about uh, Bitcoin as both a risk-on asset. You've heard a lot about that here, all of the exciting potential new opportunities but it is also a risk off asset, which, you know, the proof of concept for the US was our regional bank crisis last year. The proof of concept for us when we first um, allocated to Bitcoin was in 2015 uh, was uh, the, the Greek was, Greece was threatening to pull out of the EU. And so there was this uh, fear that we were going back into the European sovereign debt crisis and every time 
uh, that flashed in the news. Bitcoin went up. So that was our first clue way back then. Wait a minute, could this be risk off as well as risk on? And I think Nigeria is truly proof of concept now.